In the last couple of videos, we focused on introducing 2D NMR experiments, and we looked at the correlation spectroscopy experiment, which evaluated which protons are spin coupled. And then we looked at the so-called heteronuclear single quantum correlation spectroscopy or single quantum coherence spectroscopy experiment to evaluate which carbon atoms are directly bonded to which hydrogen atoms. Now what we are going to do is take this a step further in looking at the tools that we have available for determining the structures of organic molecules and look at heteronuclear multiple bond correlation spectroscopy. This is a really valuable tool for piecing together the atoms and connections that make up organic molecules because it is going to tell us which hydrogens are separated by about two to four bonds from which carbon atoms. So the heteronuclear multiple bond correlation spectroscopy experiment, the HMBC experiment, the information that that is going to provide us in solving the puzzle of putting together the chemical structures of organic molecules is it's going to indicate protons that are separated by typically two to four bonds from carbon atoms. And so if we take a look at uh, HMBC spectrum, such as the one shown here that I'm zooming in on, keeping in mind that we are observing signals for protons that are separated from carbon atoms by two to four bonds, we can piece together information about the molecule. For example, if we were focusing on this signal right here that I'm circling in green that shows up on our x-axis here at about 2.4 or so ppms, rounding there. This indicates that the proton signal is at 2.4 ppms, and that particular proton, if we follow our dotted line up, is separated by two to four bonds from each of the carbon atoms that I'm circling from each of those chemical shifts that I'm circling here. As we go up, and we can see these bright red signals represent stronger HMBC correlations. And so you can see as we go all the way up and find all of these peaks, and then we follow them over, drawing a straight line here to the Y axis, we can observe here that we can come up with the chemical shift that the signal is correlating with in this multiple bond correlation experiment. So for example, what I've drawn the dotted line over to, if we look at this, we go from 100 to 125, 130, 135, 140. So we're looking at something that is about 140 ppm. So what we could deduce from this is that the proton that is showing up in our spectrum at 2.4 ppms is two to four bonds away from a carbon atom that has a chemical shift of 140 ppms. We could continue on upward here and look at these other signals following them across and finding the other carbon atoms that are separated by two to four bonds from the proton that is at 2.4 ppm. So this adds another piece to our puzzle of understanding the chemical structures of organic molecules. This is very complementary to the HS QC experiment, the heteronuclear single quantum coherence or single quantum correlation experiment, which looked at which hydrogens are directly bonded to which carbons. That was why we called it a single. Here we're calling it HM for multiple, indicating that we are looking at hydrogens that are separated by multiple bonds, two to four bonds from carbon atoms. So we're not going to see in this HMBC experiment what hydrogens are directly connected to which carbons. Instead, we're only going to see the ones that are two to four bonds away, and that's going to help us in combination with COSY experiments, HSQC, the 1D proton, and the 1D carbon-13 experiment. It will help us in determining the complete chemical structure of the molecule. So let's do an example problem and look a bit more at HMBC.
So let's say that we have the HMBC spectrum that is shown here, which you can find in the bundle of information on 2D NMR that is available on Canvas for this course. So looking at this HMBC spectrum, we have our proton chemical shift on the x-axis, carbon on the y-axis, as is typical. We have the proton NMR spectrum superposed up here at the top along the x-axis, carbon spectrum superposed here along the y-axis to help us line up and match up these signals that are occurring in this heteronuclear multiple bond correlation experiment, the HMBC experiment here. And in this example problem of one of the parts and pieces as we start to learn to interpret HMBC data is based on the data that we are shown here, draw single headed arrows to indicate carbon atoms that have HMBC correlations with the indicated proton at 3.71 ppm. So let's say that we have established that this signal for these protons right here appear at 3.71 ppm. And we want to ask which carbon atoms are we seeing in this particular region of the spectrum? Which carbon atoms are we seeing HMBC correlations to? And so interpreting these data, as we take a look at our HMBC spectrum, we go on the x-axis to 3.71 ppm because the problem says that's what we're looking at is 3.71 and it happens that they're labeled here that these are 3.71 and we follow up from 3.71 up to here and we find this signal that when we follow it over to here conveniently enough it tells us we're at 140.45 so what we could conclude from that is that one of the long range correlations is to a carbon that's at 140 0.45 ppm. We can go on continuing here. We're going up field to a lower ppm value, smaller ppm value. And we get here to this signal that is at 3.71 ppm on the hydrogen axis and 127.09 to be exact on the y-axis, so 127.09 ppm. And so what this is telling us is that within this region that we've zoomed in, we have two of these long range correlations. Remember that the long range correlations are typically indicating hydrogens that are separated from carbons by two to four bonds. And so as we look at this proton set that is our focus, the candidates for these correlations that we're seeing, what carbons these two signals correspond to, need to be within two to four bonds away from the proton there. And so that leaves us with possibilities that range out from the proton there, the CH2 proton, to the carbon would be one bond. Two bonds would take us to here, or to here to the nitrogen, and we can't see a nitrogen in a carbon-hydrogen correlation experiment. It's not going to show up. So possible protons, possible carbons that we could be looking at include the one here, because that would be two bonds away. So that'd be a two-bond correlation, the carbon-hydrogen bond being number bond one, carbon-carbon bond being the second bond. We could also see perhaps a correlation to here. That would be a three-bond correlation, because we're counting the number of bonds between the hydrogen atom, the CH2 hydrogen that's in blue, and how many bonds does it take to get to that carbon? Another three bond correlation would bring us over to here. Um, we could also do possibly four bond correlations, which would take us to here. Another way to get a four bond correlation would be to here. Another way to get a four bond correlation would be to here. And so looking at these and thinking about the correlations that we observe in this region of the spectrum, to determine which exact correlations we are observing here. We have to think about which of the carbon atoms that we put a red X on here as our candidates, which of those would have a chemical shift in the region that we note here. And in order to determine which carbons out of this set, we would expect to have chemical shifts of 127 and 140. What we can do is go back to our table of empirical data collected for carbon 13 to determine which group here 
do we expect to be this far downfield? So what I just did was zoomed in on the region of the HMBC spectrum that we were focusing on here, looking at the correlations between the signal at 3.71 and these two carbon atoms. And then I've also brought in our carbon 13 NMR expected chemical shifts. And since we are seeing signals at 140 approximately and 127, what we need to do is look in that region between about 125 and 140. So somewhere looking in this general region of the spectrum and see what shows up in that particular region because that's going to be what we have our HMBC correlations to. And looking at the spectrum and comparing it to the structure, we have these as our candidates for the correlation. So based on the signal here that I'm highlighting pink and the one further up field here, we have correlations to 127 and 140.5 and those signals being relatively far downfield definitely don't match up with these carbons anywhere along here because those all would fall into a uh, different region such as over here or even further over here with the saturated alkanes. So the two signals have to be here and here and that's what we are showing the correlations to in this case. And a common way of doing that, and as was mentioned in the problem, was to show arrows, single-headed arrows, to indicate the correlations that we see. And so the way that you do that is you start the arrow on the proton, and then you show an arrow head indicating where the heteronuclear multiple bond correlations go. So these arrow heads are indicating the carbon atom that the hydrogen that we show here correlates with in this HMBC experiment. And that is a common way in research publications and other items to indicate that protons have an HMBC, heteronuclear multiple bond correlation, with particular carbon atoms. Is charts are drawn where all of the correlations are shown or some key correlations are shown. For example, illustrating the correlation that we were asked to point out between the proton at 3.71 and the carbon atoms at 127 approximately and approximately 140. And we could go through this entire structure and we could look at the full HMBC spectrum and draw out with these arrows all sorts of correlations throughout the structure here. And so what we are going to see is that in combination with the COSY spectrum and the HSQC spectrum, as well as the one-dimensional NMR data, we can apply this HMBC data as one of the valuable tools that we can use to piece together the complete structures of organic molecules. We can also use these NMR techniques to piece together the complete structures of proteins or nucleic acids. Really any molecule that is rich in carbons and hydrogens is going to be suitable for NMR evaluation using this variety of 1D and 2D techniques. What we are going to do in the next video is look at an example problem of applying multiple types of information, such as multiple types of 2D NMR analyses, and start to work towards solving chemical structures based on evaluating multiple types of 1D and 2D NMR data. So we're going to start stitching together all the things we've learned in the last several videos.